Dear students, was it possible that if Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was alive, then India might not have been partitioned? At least this is what our national security advisor, Sri Ajit Doval, thinks. So, in a uh, recent program, he gave a statement that if Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose would have been alive at the time of uh, independence, there might be no partition of India. So now this is statement as it is a, you can say a controversial statement because of uh, this nature of statement. So you might think that why did he say so? Or you might be interested to know that what could have been the responses of the other opposition leaders. So let us find out in this session. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and today I am in front of you dealing with this session where we are going to have a look on the political journey of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and also the relevance of this statement that if he would have been alive, there would have been no partition. So let's get started without any further delay. However, first of all, I would like to tell you that if you are a serious candidate who is actually looking for a proper guidance to accomplish his or her dream of the UPSC Civil Services Examination 2024, then the study IQ, the leader of the market in the affordable education, it has brought a very, very comprehensive program for all the students and this is called as, this is called as the prelims to interview program. In this prelims to interview program, let me tell you that you will be guided throughout your preparation journey from the prelims up to interview till the results of 2024 and the batches are available in a, English in English as well as in Hindi medium. So, as you all can see, the current price of the course is rupees 70,000. However, in case if you are using a code that is ASR Live, so this course can be availed at just a nominal cost of rupees 30,000, 29,999 rupees. So, it's a humble request to all of you that do not miss this opportunity because it's a great opportunity for all of you because let me tell you one more thing this program is not as simple as it looks because this is having a lot of other benefits for the students for example suppose you clear the prelims examination now study iq will be calling you to the delhi ncr campus they will be giving you free accommodation free meals and stay in delhi and the face to face classes will be given to you as the part of the mains residential program and trust me this is just for rupees 30,000. So, staying in Delhi, attending the offline classes from the topmost educators of India at this cost I don't think it's uh, going to be anything better than this. So, I hope that you get registered by the date of 19th June 2023 because the batches are going to start on that day. So let's get started now to the lecture and guys here let me tell you one thing that if you have not seen the other lectures of this session so make it sure that you watch the things as well. Now what is the issue? So basically uh, NSA chief Ajit Doval he gave a statement. He was actually attending. He was actually attending uh, an event of uh, ASOCHAM where he was delivering a lecture in the uh, memory of uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and in that event he said these you know these things what did he say that india would not have been partitioned if netaji subhash bose was there this was the statement all right everyone so as we all might be aware that uh, ajit doval is not a man of words he's a man of substance he's a man of he's a man of action but this time he has chosen to say something now what is the implied meaning of that that word let me just tell you a few things about it. What was the event? What was the event? So basically, National Security Advisor said that this, while delivering the first Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Memorial Lecture organized by the Industry Chamber, SO Chair, right? SO Chair. And in the course of his address, Doval delved into the various aspects of Bose's life, highlighting the legacy of Bose, and he spoke about Netaji's ability to unite the people from the diverse backgrounds and how he envisioned a uni right, unified and strong India. Now, let me tell you that he was a sort of leader who was acceptable 
by the orthodox leadership in the world as well as by the most progressive socialist leadership as well. At the same time, he was acceptable from the people across the different religious streams alike, including Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Christians, everybody, Sikh and every, every other diaspora. As we can see, his composition in the Indian National Army, he was probably the first one to induct the women regiment in his organized army. Right? So, in this session, we would also be, we would also be trying to understand that what did exactly the statements, what is exactly the statement of Ajit Doval contain? So, Doval said a few things about Netaji Bose, like he said that Bose was determined to fight the British for India's independence and he not only wanted to end the political subjugation, but felt that political, social, economic and cultural mindset of the people, that has to be changed. That means, Dovalji said that, that Bose, he did not just aspire to obtain the political freedom, but also he desired, he desired the political, social, economic and cultural mindset of the people to be changed. All right. So, he aspired for the holistic development of India and more than India, the Indian people and their mindset. That was what the priority of Netaji Bose. And he even had the audacity to challenge Mahatma Gandhi, even though he was, he was also a staunch devotee of Mahatma Gandhi. He was a very much dedicated person, very respectful towards Mahatma Gandhi. Now, let me tell you that uh, it was only Netaji Bose who give, gave this term, the father of the nation, to Mahatma Gandhi. Nowadays, we, uh, you know, make this thing a little bit awkward that how can somebody be a father of the nation. But in that time period, it was used as an epithet to respect somebody, right? Father, father of history, father of biology, right? Such type of things, such type of names were actually accorded to such individuals who held the highest position regarding a phenomenon, okay? So, Netaji Bose was so much reverent towards, so much reverent towards, towards Mahatma Gandhi. Now, India would not have been partitioned if Subhas Bose was there. Jinnah also said that I can accept only one leader and that is Subhas Bose. This is the claim of National Security Advisor that even Muhammad Ali Jinnah, I'm not sure that his particular, uh, which particular source did he claim? But if he said so, there must have been some relevance, some, some link to that. Because he would not be saying anything out of relevancy, out of context. Okay. So, even Jinnah might have accepted the leadership of Subhash Chandra Bose because this was the statement of Jinnah as per Ajit Doval. And Doval also said that Bose's efforts were driven by his passion for the patriotism and unwavering dream of a great India and his leadership was exceptional, exceptional. It was actually, it was actually acceptable across the caste, creed, religion and the regional differences of our country. So, all these things, whichever things NSA Ajit Doval said about Netaji, I think they are all absolutely correct because we all are aware about his unwavering support to the cause of nation's independence. He did not care for the purity of the means which were actually taken to achieve the end of the end of the you know efforts. What is this end of the effort? The target. So Netaji actually had this very significant ideological difference with Mahatma Gandhi as far as the purity of the means and the ends both were concerned. All right. Now, let us understand about the journey of Netaji Subhash and Bose. Why? Because this is really important to understand it. But before that, we would, we would just note the response that came from the opposition side because uh, NSA is basically having the rank of a cabinet minister and it is believed that he is uh, speaking on behalf of the government opinion. Even though that was an event where he personally appeared, not as the representative of the government, but still, the opposition was bound to respond. So, opposition led by the senior Congress leader Jairam Ramesh, he quipped that even Ajit Dovalji, who does not speak much, even he has turned to become a distorian. 
Now this is a term. Look at look at this one. Distorian. Basically, it is a uh, related to the opposite of this historian. Okay, it is a slang that is uh, derived from the historian. So someone who distorts the history, he is called or she is called as distorian, eh? distortion, doing the distortion of history. So nowadays, this is uh, often this is often accused. Uh, on the you know this is often an accusation on the people who belong to the right wing of the thought process right wing of the ideology that they keep on distorting the history manipulating it as per their own as per their own convenience so jairam ramesh he in fact suggested doval that uh, he should be studying a book he should be reading a book that is basically written by rudrangshu mukherjee and this particular book that is called as called as the nehru and bose right nehru a bose a political a political analysis of political comparison so basically this book tries to compare the ideological and ideological differences or ideological similarities between the approach the political approach of netaji bose and pandit nehru both and that's quite a hectic uh, you can say a handy book to get an idea of the political thinking or political thought process of these two great leaders However, at the same time, he also posed a few questions that uh, was Netaji not secular? Yes, of course he was. Was Netaji not in the support of not in the support of uh, restriction, right? Restricting the communal ideology? Definitely he was. Not just that, Jairam Ramesh also questioned that what was the role of the Hindu Mahasabha leader, Shyama Prasad Mukherjee, in the partition of Bengal province? right so these are certain topics you know which are very controversial and must be dealt with a stable mindset with a neutral approach in order to get read get to the conclusion now coming to the major point that basically the story of netaji subhash chandra bose now everybody must be aware about his political journey that uh, he led indian national army he uh, fought very bravely against the British. He made the first Indian Indian national government. Let me tell you that some people might be thinking that the first ever government of India that was uh, established by established by Raja Mahendra Pratap. That is a different thing because here he is claiming to be claiming to be the first Indian national government, and this Indian national government, led by Netaji Bose, was it was actually approved it was acknowledged by nine sovereign nations okay so basically if we talk about right if we talk about uh, the life of netaji apart from his uh, india national army's journey so he had you know he had ample opportunities to live a luxurious life because he belonged to such a family you can see the family photograph of netaji and he was in fact the ninth child among the 14 siblings right that's a little bit surprising but in those days it was common even uh, gurudev ravindranath tagore probably he also had uh, i think 11 siblings if i'm not wrong okay so netaji was born to prabhavati devi and janaki nath bose who was an advocate and located at odisha's katak which was the part of the bengal province at that point of time on 23rd January 1897. In 1909, he was moved to the Ravensha Collegiate School where he completed his secondary education and here he was taught Bengali, Sanskrit as well as the, as the Vedas and Upanishads. So he had an education, he had an education which was enriched with the traditional as well as the modern education. All right. So, he developed a balanced attitude as well as a balanced aptitude in his life. All right. Now, his father wanted him to pursue the English, little English medium education, and that's why he shifted him. He shifted him to an all English school. However, Netaji was, as usual, the brilliant student, and therefore he attained an overall second position in his matriculation examination and joined this very prestigious presidency college in calcutta okay in 1911 now that was an incident i think that was a very famous incident you might have seen in the movies also 
I think a web series was also made on Netaji Bose, as well as there are movies, in fact, based on his life. So, this is a very famous incident which is often picturized that uh, his history professor, whose name was E. F. Oten, Professor Oten. So, he actually had a few differences. In fact, Professor Oten was very disrespectful towards the India's customs, rituals, and traditions, as well as the Indian people. He was highly racist towards them. Netaji was having read the significance of those customs and traditions, he was very respectful towards that. In fact, mother of Netaji Bose herself was a too much religious, a devoted lady. So, Netaji Bose actually, he simply hit that professor with his slippers, with his sandals. And that was the incident, real. That was a real incident. And after that, he was, he was expelled from the college, presidency college. And he took admission into the Scottish Church College for the BA degree in philosophy and completed the education in 1918. After which, after which he got admission into the, into the Fitzwilliam College at Cambridge University to appear for the higher education. He did not just appear there, but he also qualified the prestigious Indian Civil Services examination that was held in London. So basically, after qualifying that examination, he had that opportunity, he had that opportunity to join as the sub-collector. And he in fact had joined initially, but he was reluctant to serve the British government rather than he wanted to, rather than that he wanted to serve for the cause of the nation. And that's where his entry to the politics took place because he had cracked the ICS examination 1920 with the fourth rank the fourth rank overall he had and he got a lucrative job as well but he resigned from this ICS, returned to India and joined Indian National Congress under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi because he was extremely disturbed due to the Jallianwala Bagh incidents which had taken place in, in the April, on the 13th of April 1919, okay. So that was the point where his motive of uh, serving the nation it actually take it actually took the it took the shape of reality okay now moving further when he came to india what happened he attended the 1921 addressal of mahatma gandhi at bombay however he had certain questions he had certain questions he did not get the opportunity to outrightly uh, to ask those questions to mahatma gandhi but he was uh, kind of, you know, disillusioned with the solutions of those questions as he uh, tried to receive from the speech of Mahatma Gandhi. However, as I told you that he was devoted to his ideology because he considered him at least to be the guiding torch in this dark path of the India's struggle towards the freedom. So, what happened? That if we talk about Netaji's entry into the politics, it was uh, it was uh, collaborated by, so in fact, it was corroborated by the contemporary personal life of Netaji, about which we do not talk much in the historical context. But let me tell you in this lecture that even Netaji, he also had a love life. He actually, uh, he actually loved a lady and she was from Germany. She was from Germany and he married her, had a child, had a girl child. And currently, even, even now also, the family, the extended family and the later family of Netaji Bose lives mostly in Germany and some people also who are distant relatives, the you know, descendants of his uh, nephew, they live in India. The immediate family, the successor family of Netaji lives in Germany. So, what was the story? Let me tell you. Basically, in June 1934, during his visit to Germany, a mutual friend introduced Netaji to Emily Chanel, right, the daughter of an Austrian veterinarian, right, whom he went on to hire for her English and typing skills to help him write his book, The Indian Struggle. So, this girl, she was hired by Netaji Bose to, when he was working uh, on his book, The Indian Struggle, and as she had an immaculate command over the English language, and probably Nitaji was impressed by her typing skills as well. So, she was hired for that. 
Now, eight years later, in 1942, amidst the Second World War, when Netaji was on, on exile, he was on his way to Germany, to Japan, to Axis nations, to gather the support for the cause of the India's freedom. At that moment also, he spared the time to propose his love, Emily, and following which the both got married in a secret Hindu ceremony in January 1942. And that year, in the November, month of November, they both had a girl child. So that was the story. Now, what happened? Let me tell you one more thing that this marriage was so secret that even the elder brother of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, whose name was Sharat Chandra Bose, even he was not aware about this marriage. In fact, uh, Emily had written a letter to the elder brother of Netaji Bose and telling him about uh, this incidence that they both have got married and uh, they both have got a daughter. But the letter, unfortunately, you know, due to the world war that was going on, letter reached to Sarat Chandra Bose two years later in 1944. That was the, that was the, you know, story. So, after, uh, you know, talking about his uh, family, his journey in Congress was also not less than, not less than a journey to a journey to cherish. And why? Because he joined Indian National Congress under the aura of Mahatma Gandhi, under the influence of his aura, he became a member. But he was not attracted completely by his ideology. Rather, he was attracted by his persona. His persona. So what happened? Gandhiji advised him to uh, learn the basics of the politics from Chitranjan Das the giant leader of uh, Congress in Bengal, who was also not very much, not very much fond of the Gandhian ideology. He had his own methodologies of uh, struggling against the British rule. And not just that, when in the 1923, what happened? Netaji Bose became the president of the youth wing of the National Congress and also he became the state secretary of the Bengal Congress. All right, everyone. At that time, he was the editor of a newspaper called as a forward, which was uh, basically the mouthpiece. It was like the mouthpiece of the Bengal Congress as per the ideology of Chitaranjan Das. Right? He also worked as the CEO of Calcutta Municipal Corporate, right, Municipal Council in the year 1923. At that time, Chitaranjan Das was the mayor of Calcutta Corporation. Okay. Even Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose also became the mayor of Calcutta Municipal Council in the year 1930, later on. Okay. And he was sent to Mandalay Jail in 1925 because of, uh, because of you know, his works in the Bengal Congress circle. He was sentenced to the jail, sent to Mandalay where he got uh, ill. He got actually, he got uh, ill and uh, caught an infection of the tuberculosis. Okay, so he was suffering with TB because of which he was, he was sent back to India. Now, when he came back to India, what happened? He became a member of the Nehru Committee, the All Parties Conference at Calcutta. Remember, the challenge of, uh, you know, challenge of the Secretary of India, Lord William Birkenhead. He had challenged the Indians to at least prepare a draft of the sample constitution only then they were eligible to ask for the independence or ask for the dominion status. So the task was uh, actually a monumental task that was uh, taken by the all parties conference and under the chairmanship of uh, Pandit Moti Lal Nehru, an eight-membered committee that was established including Pandit Nehru in which Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was also a member. However, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and Pandit Nehru, the two young Turks in the leadership of Congress, they were both not ready to you know, accept the dominion status demands. In fact, both of these leaders, Pandit Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose, Pandit Nehru and Netaji Bose both founded this uh, Independence for India League and gave a time of one year to the Congress leadership that within one year, if you are able to obtain the dominion status, then it's very good. Otherwise, we would be we would be putting up the demand for the total independence. Now, let me tell you one thing: the total independence was the brainchild, at least in the Congress political party, it was the brainchild of uh, 
नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस एंड पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू बोथ ओके बट एज वी ऑल नो द क्रेडिट गोज टू क्रेडिट गोज टू द लाहौर डिक्लेरेशन और लाहौर लाहौर रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल कांग्रेस दैट वॉज चेयर बाई पंडित नेहरू नेताजी बोस इज वेरी कन्वीनियंटली इग्नोर्ड दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम सो वेन ही बिकेम द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द कांग्रेस इनटीन थर्टी एट नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन एक्चुअली हरिपुरा सेशन एंड त्रिपुरी सेशन हरिपुरा नाइनटीन थर्टी एट एंड त्रिपुरी नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन ही वॉज इलेक्टेड ही वॉज इलेक्टेड एज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द कांग्रेस बट इन नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइन एट त्रिपुरी सेशन ही हैड सर्टन आइडियोलॉजिकल डिफरेंसेस विथ महात्मा गांधी बिकॉज ही वॉन्टेड टू प्रेशराइज द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट नेताजी बोस वॉन्टेड टू प्रेशराइज द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट एज दिस वॉज द टाइम वेन द गवर्नमेंट वॉज एट इट्स वीकेस्ट पॉइंट वेयर एज महात्मा गांधी ही वॉन्टेड टू यू नो गिव दैट पॉइंट ऑफ रिलीफ टू द गवर्नमेंट बिकॉज इट वॉज ऑलरेडी बिजी स्ट्रगलिंग अगेंस्ट द नाजी एंड द फास्टेस्ट पावर्स so this difference in the ideology led to the conflict gandhi ji is supported candidate pattabhi sitaramaiya he could not win the election of the congress president so gandhi ji actually demanded for the recounting of the votes so that he could confirm that his candidate is defeated bose understood the hint and uh, he resigned from the party he established his own political party called as the forward block and let me tell you one more thing that when in the 1940 in the place called ramgarh ramgarh that was in the bihar at that point of time currently it is in jharkhand so there was a there was a individual satyagrah declaration netaji bose you know what he organized the anti compromise conference against the individual satyagrah that was his political will okay not just that he was not ready to give any sort of respite to the british authorities in that time in fact when they were establishing a monument in you know in the memory of that black hole tragedy which the british often you know they often uh, remorsed over they were actually facing a protest by netaji subhash chandra bose due to which they arrested netaji subhash chandra bose and put him in the prison once again however once again the prison atmosphere did not suit netaji and he actually he actually started falling very ill seeing his falling health he was shifted from the jail and put under the house arrest now that's where the story of uh, netaji subhash chandra bose in fact the story of simply subhash chandra bose that started to make him Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the great Netaji. All right. So what happened there? Let me tell you. So first of all, his journey, right? His journey in the INA that actually started when he, you know, changed his attire, changed his uh, overlook, and he renamed himself as a Jiaudin. Took the shape, uh, took the appearance of a uh, uh, Maulvi, Islamic uh, scholar, Islamic cl clergy, and he somehow reached to peshawar from where he reached to kabul which was under the control of soviets from kabul via land route going through that you know path of uh, israel palestine etc it's, he reached he reached to germany and germany it was actually controlling the entire parts of the northern africa entire parts of the mediterranean region and it was easier for netaji bose at least when he had the open support of open support of soviet and remember that was the point when soviet was in the support of germany it would be in the december 1941 when soviet will be turning against germany because germans would be attacking even on their ally soviets okay so when netaji bose reached germany what happened he even met adolf hitler and founded the free india center in berlin also created the indian league and a special bureau for the india these two organizations as well in berlin even these two organizations the indian league and the special bureau for india these two had the soldiers who were captured by the axis powers during the second world war and the soldiers of these two institutions these two organizations 
दे गेव द टाइटल द ऑनररी टाइटल टू सुभाष चंद्र बोस विच टाइटल बाय विच वी ऑल नो हिम दैट इज द नेताजी नेताजी टाइटल वॉज गिवेन टू सुभाष चंद्र बोस बाय होम बाय द सोल्जर्स ऑफ द इंडियन लीग एंड द स्पेशल ब्यूरो फॉर इंडिया इन बर्लिन बाय द सोल्जर्स ऑफ दीज टू ऑर्गेनाइजेश नाउ आई एन ए वॉज एक्चुअली द ब्रेन चाइल्ड ऑफ द जैपनीज मेजर एंड पोस्ट वॉर लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल इवाइची फूजीवारा इवाइची फूजीवारा इवाइची फूजीवारा ही वॉज एक्चुअली हेडिंग द जैपनीज इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट एंड ही एक्चुअली सजेस्टेड दैट देयर शुड बी अ काउंटर आर्मी अ पैरल आर्मी विच वुड बी सबसर्वियंट टू द जैपनीज आर्मी इन देयर एक्सपेडिशन अगेंस्ट द अलाइड फोर्सेस सो दिस वॉज द आइडिया बाय विच he first met pritam singh dhillon the president of the bangkok chapter of the indian independence league remember this indian independence league was actually founded by ras bihari bose okay and the bangkok chapter of the indian independence league was headed by pritam singh dhillon where where major fujiwara what happened that he discussed the formation of formation of the indian national army and captain mohan singh captain mohan singh who was captured from the british indian army a captured soldier he was given the charge to manage this indian national army okay in the year 1942 the first the first indian national army that was established right and after that when netaji subhash chandra bose when he arrived when he arrived it was it was handed over under the control of netaji subhash chandra bose and thousands of the common people thousands of the imprisoned soldiers from malaysia singapore and the other southeast asian regions they all joined they all flocked to join the indian national army and it swelled up to the numbers of 60000 plus members in the indian national army even the women were enthusiastic to join due to which netaji bose he was uh, he was basically of the opinion that they should also get an opportunity so he decided to divide the indian national army into the various into the various regiments he divided into the gandhi regiment nehru regiment azad regiment and bose regiment and the fifth one that was called as that was called as rani of jhansi regiment okay sometimes it is often named as a gandhi brigade nehru brigade subhash brigade and azad brigade and the regiment of rani of jhansi right which was headed by captain lakshmi sahgal actually at that time she was lakshmi swaminathan okay everyone so this is the story so when he arrived in singapore bose announced the formation of the provisional government of the azad hind fauj on the date 21st right october 1943 okay so that was the date in october on in 1943 when he announced when he announced the formation of azad hind government and where was it headquartered it was headquartered at rangoon and later on moved to port blair so the headquarters of the provisional government was it moved to rangoon in january 1944 and after fighting at the arakan front the ina crossed the indo burma border and marched towards imphal and kohima in the month of march so he announced at singapore he announced at singapore the islands of uh, andaman and nicobar were under the control of japanese army given to azad hind fauj where the port blair became the operational headquarters however the headquarters of the government were at rangoon right so basically singapore rangoon and port blair these three became the operational points of indian national army okay everyone bose the most famous quote of bose was give me blood and i shall give you freedom that was spoken as a part of the motivational speech for the indian national army at a rally of indians in burma on 4th of july 1944 and two days later addressing from singapore radio he addressed the mahatma gandhi he addressed the father of the nation this name was given to mahatma gandhi by netaji subhash chandra bose this actually this actually showcases his admiration towards the personality of mahatma gandhi the position of mahatma gandhi in the journey of indian freedom struggle at the same time 
इवन गांधी ऑल्सो ब्लेस्ड नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस कॉलिंग हिम एज हिज सन हु वॉज जस्ट हैविंग अ डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन फॉलोइंग अ डिफरेंट पाथ बट ही विस्ट हिम द सक्सेस इन हिज इन हिज ड्रीम्स ओके सो बेसिकली इन अकम्पलिशमेंट ऑफ हिज ड्रीम्स आई शुड से सो बेसिकली दिस इंडिकेट्स द यू नो म्यूचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड म्यूचुअल लेवल ऑफ रेस्पेक्ट बिटवीन दीज टू ग्रेट लीडर्स ऑफ इंडिया इंस्टेड ऑफ हैविंग अ पर्सनल ग्रज अगेंस्ट ईच अदर दे वेर जस्ट फाइटिंग ऑन द आइडियोलॉजिकल फ्रंट बट मेंटेनिंग अ कॉर्डियल रिलेशन एट द पर्सनल फ्रंट so this is something worth learning even in the today's scenario all right everyone so i hope that uh, this session must have been fruitful for you to attend at this point and not just that if you loved this session so there are various sessions like that there are many more things than that there is a complete and holistic guidance program for all of you beginning from the prelims up to the interview study iq is offering you this extremely important and extremely significant program for all of the candidates who are aspiring to clear the 2024 examination of upsc csc and guys we are starting our batches from 19th of june make it sure that you do not miss this opportunity of getting not just the prelims but the mains including the residential program support at just a nominal cost of 29999 rupees use this code to get this particular price what is the code asr live so this is going to give you a huge benefit in our course so that's all in today's session everyone if you want the additional pptes or the pdfs of the lecture then you can join my telegram channel as well and uh, you can also join the telegram channel by uh, scanning this particular code as you can see here thank you so much for watching it let's meet in the next session till then take care everybody and thank you so much jai hind